Hello there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a Serene Scene card to share with you using the Peaceful Birds set. So let's get started. This is the beautiful Peaceful Birds set by Stacey Yakula. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to use some of the floral images, the birdhouse and two of the birds. With some of these images, the, the stems are quite long and it's sometimes a little bit difficult to line them up properly if you're going to cut them out with the coordinating dies. So I wanted to show you a little trick. I've got the die here and I'm placing it down onto my white cardstock and I'm just holding it in place with a little bit of temporary tape. You don't necessarily have to do this but because I'm using the magnet in the Mini Misty, I want to make sure that the die doesn't kind of jump towards the magnet because those magnets are really quite strong. I'm then bringing in the stamp and then placing it over the top of the die and it's gonna fit in a little bit like a puzzle piece. Now this isn't a 100% foolproof method of lining it up properly. You can definitely die cut first and then stamp afterwards. I am always not a huge fan of doing that I have to be honest I personally prefer to stamp and then die cut so I found that this is quite a good way to be able to try and get the images to line up with the dies so I'm inking up the images with extreme black ink and I am going to stamp that twice just to make sure that I get a really nice dark impression and then I did go ahead and stamp the rest of the images off screen I'm going to bring in the die here so that I can see if it is actually going to line up quite well and I think it will. So next I can colour in the images. So I'm starting off by colouring in the birdhouse here and I'm starting off with my darkest shade which is E49 and I'm mapping out where I want my darkest areas to be. I almost always colour from darkest to lightest, that's just my preferred preference. I find that if I want the lighter colours to be quite light I don't want to add too many layers of them and so I personally find it easier to add the dark colours first and then add not so many layers of the lighter colours. I'm now bringing in the E59 and I'm blending that out with the E49. I have sped this colouring up quite a bit as you can see but it did take me maybe about 20 minutes to colour in all of the images which I didn't think was too bad. I'm then bringing in the E57 and blending that out further. And then I can bring in the E55 and I can blend that out even more. So I'm using this as my lightest shade and I do bring in the E57 again just to try and blend those two colours really nicely together. And then I can finish off with the kind of trimming bits of the birdhouse with that E55. And then for the holes in the birdhouse, kind of like the door, I suppose, to get into the birdhouse, I'm using those darkest colours again, the E49 as my darkest. I want it to look like there's kind of sort of hollow inside, I suppose. And then I can finish off with that E57 just on that little piece there on the left hand side. For the birds, I wanted to have them to be kind of like bluebirds, but I didn't want to go really bright with the colours. I wanted the card to sort of have a little bit more of a peaceful kind of theme to it, sort of like a serene scene. And so I wanted to go with more muted tones. So I'm using some of the B9 colours. So I started off with the B97, blending that out with the B95, then going in with the B93, and then my lightest shade, which is the B91. For their tummies, I'm using C5, blending that out with C3, and then blending that out further with the C1, 
and then I do finish off with the C00 to blend that out to white. And then I apologise for my head getting in the way here, but I'm using the YR24 to colour it in their beaks. And these are just tiny little areas, so I had to kind of lean right over to get to those. For the flowers, I wanted to add some purple tones to them. My background is going to be purple, so I thought that it would match quite nicely. So I'm starting off with the V17, blending that out with the V15. Bringing in the V12. Followed by the V01. And then my lightest shade, which is the V quadruple zero. And then I go back in with the V12, just to add a little bit of extra darkness towards the bottom and then blend that out with the lighter colours again. And then for the stems, I'm using YG17 and YG23. And I started off colouring these in and then realised quite quickly that my head is basically going to completely get in the way of the camera. And so I ended up colouring those off screen. But I just used the two shades there, darker towards the top and then lighter towards the bottom. I can then bring in the Peaceful Birds Dynamics and I'm placing those dies over the images. I can hold them down with some low tack tape. So just lining up those dies as best as possible and then holding them down with that temporary tape and then I can run those through my die cutting machine. And here is where I get to see if the dies lined up properly and actually I did a pretty good job with those flowers but the bottom of the birdhouse I did misalign slightly but I'm going to sort that out in a second. So just popping the pieces out from the cardstock. And then you can see here at the bottom of the birdhouse, I did misalign that slightly. So I've got a little bit more white on the right hand side compared to the left. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off and no one's ever going to know that I misaligned that die slightly. I then decided to layer these too high so I took the dies cut them from some more white cardstock and I'm just placing those behind the stamped ones using some on point precision glue to adhere those together and I like using the liquid glue for these die cuts so I've got time to sort of wiggle them around and try and line them up. I thought that I didn't really want to use foam tape on these images, especially on those stems. It would take me some time to cut out lots of little bits of foam tape. So I thought I would add the second layer of the cardstock just to give that dimension. Ordinarily, I probably would go with three layers, but for these, I decided to just use the two. For my background, I've taken a panel of white cardstock that's three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches and I'm using Wilted Violet Distress Ink and I'm adding that towards the bottom of this panel. I thought I would go with purple today. Like I said, I'm going for sort of more muted tones and I wanted to give it sort of a little bit of like a a bit like a magical feel, kind of like you're sort of in a fairy garden type thing. And I thought purple would work really nicely for that. So I'm just using a blending brush here and laying that ink down. I'm starting off at the bottom of the panel and fading it up to white at the top. It did take me a few layers just to get the saturation of color that I wanted. So really focusing that colour towards the bottom of the panel. I'm then adding some water onto a non-stick craft sheet and then I'm taking some Perfect Pearls powder and I'm going to add a little bit of that onto the sheet as well. 
I want to add some splatter onto the background and I thought it'd be quite nice to add a little bit of sparkle with the perfect pearls but I also want to add some with some white paint as well so I'm taking some Dr PH Martin's bleed proof white paint and I'm using a second paintbrush here just so that I don't contaminate the two pots I didn't really want the sparkle into the white paint and I didn't want the white paint into the perfect pearls I was just being a bit lazy I could have just cleaned the brushes in between but I thought it was just a little bit easier for me to use the two paint brushes I'm then mixing the perfect pearls powder with the water and then I'm also mixing that paint with the water as well just to loosen it slightly I've got the panel in a splat box here and then I'm holding the paintbrush above the panel and then just tapping that paintbrush just to splatter on some of the paint to start with And I find the splat box really helpful just to try and not get too much of the splatter on my desk. And then I can do the same thing with the perfect pearls. And then I can set that aside to dry. I think it looks really nice with that added sparkle. Once my panel has dried, I'm going to adhere the images on top using some on-point precision glue. So just adding some of that onto the back of the birdhouse to start with. And then I can pop that down on the panel. And I wanted the birdhouse to be fairly central on this panel. So just popping that down. And then I can bring in something heavy. This is a glass paperweight just to hold that down while the glue dries. And then I can add the flowers on either side. And although the tops of the flowers are going over that birdhouse, which is dimensional, I found that because I added the two layers of that cardstock, it worked out perfectly fine and kind of didn't sort of distort or sort of bend that cardstock in any way. So just pressing that down and again I'm going to bring that paper weight over the top while the glue dries. And then I originally thought that I was going to add the birds with foam tape but I decided not to in the end. I quite liked having the kind of like slight dimension with the double layers of the cardstock and I thought that I would carry that on with the rest of the design. So I'm just popping this bird here onto the birdhouse. And again, it's going over the top of that flower, but it worked out perfectly fine and did adhere really well. And then I do want to add a little bit of foam tape towards the top of this bird, where it's going to overhang onto the panel. And then I can add a bit more of the liquid glue at the bottom. And then I can just pop him at the top and I thought he looked quite cute kind of flying home. I'm then taking some scissors and I'm cutting off the pieces at the bottom of the panel. I find it easier to cut these pieces off having the panel sort of on the opposite side so cutting it from the back so I've got that kind of level where I need to cut. I've then got an A2 size white card base here. This is a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and I'm adding some and I have added, excuse me, some thin foam tape onto the back of the panel and placed that down. I have heat embossed a sentiment from the Peaceful Birds set onto some black licorice cardstock. And I've added some foam tape just kind of in between those areas where there isn't any images. And then I can add some glue onto the back of the sentiment and then I can pop that in place. And I'm just using a T-square ruler here just to help me place that down straight. So I'm placing it down to start with and then I can wiggle it around to get it straight. And then to finish off the card, I thought that I would add some white gel pen dots onto the flower heads. I thought it would kind of just bring in the images into the background since I've got those splatters on the background. 
I did think about adding some sort of like iridescent gems or something like that. I think that would look really pretty, but I thought the card was kind of busy enough as it was. And I have got that sparkle with the splatter in the background as well. So I can just finish off there with that white gel pen. And I really like how the card turned out. I like that kind of subtle shimmer in the background. And I think the colours work really nicely together. The purple background and then the kind of muted blues in the birds. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.